Hello everyone, welcome to an empties video. So it has been a long, long time since I've done one of these. I'm really sorry about that. I really intended to do them monthly and then I just kept putting it off and putting it off and here we are. So I have discarded a lot of my empties over the last couple of months, but I've tried to hang on to as much as possible. So I have quite a bit of makeup and then just a handful of other things. I know people are more interested in the makeup empties more than anything else. Um, so I'll just go over the other things pretty quickly and then I'll move straight into the makeup empties that I have. So I wanna start with skincare. The first two things I have are both sheet masks. I am really not a sheet mask person, but every now and then I get tempted and I wanna try them. I always hear people raving about sheet masks and I feel like I need to keep trying them and eventually I'll find something that works for me. Neither one of these really worked for me. The first one I have is from Yes to Tomatoes. This is a blemish fighting mask. So I got this at a time when I was breaking out a lot. I had a couple of breakouts right here, which I still have a little bit of scarring from. And then usually I get like that time of the month breakout around on my chin. And at this particular time, my skin was pretty crazy so I wanted something that would help with that and this I didn't notice any difference. So I like to have a little stockpile of acne treatments. <laughs> this mask just didn't seem to do much for my skin at all. Um, it's got salicylic acid in it and tomato extract and it all sounded really good and I like the idea of sheet masks. It was definitely very relaxing. That's the good thing about it. It's like you can't really do a whole lot when you've got this mask on your face. So that aspect is really nice, but in terms of what it did to my skin, not really a whole lot. And the second mask I had was from Mask Bar. This is the rose gold foil sheet mask. So it really was just a rose gold mask. It was really kind of silly looking. I think I took a picture of it and posted it on my Instagram stories because it was just so funny. I got this one because uh, it was supposed to be really nourishing and hydrating. Again, I didn't really notice that much of a difference. Like I liked having the mask on my face. I liked just sort of lying back and relaxing. But as far as nourishing and hydrating my skin, I didn't notice any big difference like with this mask as I would with some of my more traditional face masks, which are generally the things that I prefer the most. Like I like the idea of sheet masks, but nothing I've tried yet really works for me. If you have any recommendations for sheet masks that you really love that really work for you, um, specifically things that are hydrating, that's what I'm looking for right now. So if you have any recommendations, please do let me know because I am willing to try more and hopefully I'll find something that works well for me. Speaking of anti-acne products, I have something from Neutrogena. This is the oil-free acne wash pink grapefruit foaming scrub. I keep going back to Neutrogena whenever I break out. It's like Neutrogena and Clean and Clear. Like those things that I used when I was younger. I just keep going back to it. I know these scrubs are really not the greatest. I don't like to use them very often. When I do use something like this, I use it just specifically on the spot that I'm breaking out, not all over my whole face. And it does help. This is one of the things that helps. There's a toner from Clean and Clear and then this, as well as the uh, cleanser, the grapefruit cleanser. Those three things just help my skin when I've broken out. So I just don't wanna try anything else because you know, if it ain't broke, don't try and fix it. I really do not like recommending skincare stuff because everybody's skin is so, so different. Uh, the last skincare stuff I have are micellar waters. I have three of them. I actually have more, but I didn't bother to keep the duplicates of the ones I had because I figured you get the point. Um, I have Bioderma. This is the moisturizing makeup removing micelle solution. This is for dehydrated and sensitive skin. I really do not like Bioderma. And that's kind of controversial because I feel like whenever I watch empties videos, whenever I'm watching skincare routines, everybody who uses micellar water is always talking about Bioderma. And I used to use Bioderma a lot until I started using Garnier and Garnier is my favorite. I have bought bottle after bottle after bottle of this stuff. I go through probably a full container a month at minimum. Right now I have one of these ones and one of these ones and I've used got five or six over the last couple of months. 
I use it for removing my makeup, I use it for cleansing my face, I use it for removing swatches off my hands, I use it for everything, but I love this stuff for removing makeup. So the two that I particularly like are these ones, the Micellar Water with Argan Oil and the All-in-One Cleansing Water for All Skin Types, the, the blue cap. There are a few different versions. I've tried them all. Uh, there's one with a green cap, which I believe is oil controlling, and then there's one with a pink cap which may be for sensitive skin don't quote me on that um, but these are my absolute favorite this is the one I use most often the one with argan oil because it removes everything I tend to use a lot of primers and setting sprays and layers of product and this stuff gets it off so easily I don't have to tug at my skin I don't have to really struggle to wipe away makeup this is works so well and then this one I will use on a lighter makeup day so the argan oil one if I'm doing like a full face something kind of like this if I've got glitter on if I've got primers and glue and all this stuff I want to use this one and if it's just sort of a, a more everyday kind of makeup then this one works fine and that's why I have one of each I can't imagine not using this stuff at this point they better not get rid of it because this is like this is a st absolute staple for me and I can't recommend this stuff higher. If you are a micellar water person, I do highly recommend the Garnier and the good thing about the Garnier is that there are multiple versions. So there are appropriate micellar waters for different skin types. If you're hooked on Bioderma, which is much more expensive than Garnier, give the Garnier a shot. I have one hair product. I felt like it really wasn't that valuable to talk about hair stuff because I don't tend to show my hair in videos. I wear wigs. So I just thought I would mention this product because I really like it and will potentially be repurchasing it at some point when I am making a purchase from Ulta because that's the only place I can get this. This is the Not Your Mother's Beach Babe Texturizing Sea Salt Spray. I think this works so well. I tend to braid my hair when I get out of the shower and I love to spray this stuff in here because then when I take the braid out the next day, um, I get those really lovely beachy waves. So I get it from the braid, but also from this stuff. I have skipped days using this and I notice a difference when I take, when I unravel the braid. I definitely notice a difference when I don't use a sea salt spray. Uh, the other one I really like is from Verb. Um, that's the one I currently have a little bit left of that I've been using since I ran out of this one. But this one, it's just, it's such a good lightweight sea salt spray. It doesn't make your hair crunchy. Okay, so we're going to segue into makeup here, starting with my brush cleaners. So I want to start with two different ones. So every now and then the Cinema Secrets brush cleaner goes out of stock on the Sephora website. And then I'm like, what do I do? I need to clean my brushes. I can't let them go for too long. It's awful. So I buy other random brush cleaners. I picked up the Makeup Forever Instant Brush Cleanser. This stuff made my brushes so greasy. I feel like this cleaned my synthetic brushes pretty well, but not my natural hair brushes. It They were so gross and greasy and like this stuff you're not even supposed to rinse it. Like it says no rinse, quick dry and I just, I hated it on my on those brushes. It just really did not clean them very well at all. I'm glad it's gone now and it's not something I will be repurchasing. I just want to live with the Cinema Secret stuff forever. And speaking of weird scents, uh, the Sephora dry clean. This is an instant dry brush cleaner spray. So it's in the aerosol container like with like a dry shampoo and you would spray your brushes and wipe them. Now this cleaned my brushes incredibly well but it has a very strong floral scent that lingered and I did not like that. I am a little bit scent sensitive especially to floral fragrances so this was just it was not that was not good if it was completely scent free i would probably pick up this just to have on hand with the cinema secrets because i cleaned my natural hair brushes really well like started removing some of the staining um which is a problem i have even when i deep clean the brushes i sometimes can't get all those stains out which it doesn't really bother me because as long as the product is out of the brush it doesn't matter if it's stained because I'm not gonna get that transfer over they just don't look 
brand new anymore, but as long as they function fine, that's okay. And I have three different sizes of the Cinema Secrets brush cleaner. I've already repurchased the full size and I'm gonna need to purchase this size again. This is the, the biggest size that they sell. This is 32 fluid ounces or 946 milliliters. This is one of the best things ever, another staple product for me because I just love cleaning my brushes with this. I used my MAC brush cleanser the other night to clean my brushes and it took like five times as long. I really wanted to, to do a more of a deeper cleanse, which it's good to do, but my God, this stuff is just so much better and I can just really do quick cleanses. And then I had to buy smaller sizes because the big size was out of stock and I was literally going through the Sephora website, every possible listing they had, the whatever was left over from their holiday stock this was from like a little ornament thing this little tiny size i had to get it because i just needed it i could not i cannot survive without this brush cleaner it sounds so incredibly dramatic but it has absolutely changed my life because now i actually look forward to cleaning my brushes i clean my brushes more often which means i can be more creative with the makeup that i do so this is one of my favorite products. All right, so as promised, makeup. So some of these things had been in project pans. A couple of these things were in abandoned projects, stuff that I just didn't keep going because I am terrible. But anyway, I wanted to share these things with you and this is not all the makeup I've finished and this is not all the makeup that I've gotten rid of either. I didn't bother keeping things that I was decluttering, like the um, ColourPop Super Shock shadows. I basically got rid of all of them just because I felt like we would be here all night, <laughs> me going through the random stuff that I've decluttered. And some of it just felt sort of pointless to talk about. Some of it was just old. So I just wanted to talk about stuff that I finished more recently and not stuff that I was just hanging on to like a teeny tiny bit of. Anyway, I have two face primers. The first one is the Laura Mercier Blemishless Face Primer. It has taken everything in me not to repurchase this. I love this face primer. Um, I bought this after trying the sample and I just love the way that it made my skin look. It really seemed to help with my breakouts as well in that I really wasn't getting many. I've definitely gotten a few more since I stopped using this as often. So this is something I will be repurchasing. I'm waiting till I finish some more of my face primers, specifically some of my older ones, which I've just been hanging on to because I just want to use them instead of getting rid of them. So this is probably going to be one of those repurchases during a sale time. And then I tried a little sample of the Benefit Professional Pearl Primer, a very shimmery primer. Didn't really like this, but it was just a tiny baby sample, so I thought that I would use it. Um, I have used a few sample things outside of my sample project and thought that I would just mention them. Some of them I did get rid of, but some of them I managed to hang on to. This one, I... I I don't really like illuminating shimmery primers in general. They just seem to make my skin look like crap. The only one I really like is the Becca First Light Primer, the purple one. That's the thing that I found like really makes my skin look super glowy. I'm trying to restrict my usage on that primer because it's so good. I'm trying to finish up some of the other illuminating primers I have that just don't work as well. I have a little mini eyeshadow primer. This is the Smashbox Photo Finish Lid Primer in Light. Did not like this. So the sample size has the little doe foot applicator. I just felt like my eyeshadow really creased with this. Plus it's a little bit too dark and too yellow for me. Like that, it's supposed to just blank out your lid, but I usually have a problem with tinted eyeshadow primers because they usually end up being a shade or two too dark and usually too yellow. So it just ends up being this weird contrast between the rest of my face and wherever the primer is on my eye. And of course, the Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer Potion. This is my holy grail and another thing that I need to repurchase and have not yet. Uh, this is the longest I've gone without this. It's because I'm trying not to repurchase unnecessary things, like with the Laura Mercier Blemishless Primer. Um, this is definitely a necessary thing for me, but I have the Too Faced Shadow Insurance, which I've been using instead of this one because that's the only primer I have. And I knew if I got the Urban Decay one again, I would not use the Too Faced. So I've decided to use the Too Faced to finish that off and then I will repurchase the Urban Decay. The Too Faced Shadow Insurance does not work as well on my eyelids as this one does. I have very oily eyelids, which eyeshadow likes to disappear from. And this is the only eyeshadow primer I've used that really keeps my eyeshadow in place 
for as long as I want it to be there. So I have two pink color correctors. I have the Sephora Bright Future color correctors. This is pink slash brightness. I really did not like this. The problem with this, I think, is that I couldn't get enough product out and it was just sort of streaky underneath my eye because that's where I use the pink to contrast the the blue shadows underneath my eyes and really brighten everything up. I really didn't like the applicator but even the product itself just wasn't as good as the Urban Decay Naked Skin Color Corrector in pink. I did repurchase this one once I finished it. I just really like this formula. I really like the concealer. The concealer is something that I use all the time, specifically underneath my eyes. These just pair really well together. I feel like this covers up my dark circles, but yet it looks natural still. It doesn't look like I'm wearing a lot of makeup. And it's one of those things that's definitely noticeable when I skip it. There's days when I'm like, oh, you know what? I'm just gonna put on like a quick little bit of foundation or whatever just to even my skin out and people will be like oh you look tired did you have a rough night or something like that and on nights when I have gotten almost no sleep and I can color correct people are like oh you look so refreshed it's so funny how you can trick people with makeup and this is definitely one of those trick people products I just really like the naked skin products in general if you've been here for a while you will know the Urban Decay Naked Skin Foundation is one of my absolute favorite things I'm on my eighth bottle right now I think I've lost track on how many times I've repurchased that foundation and the concealer actually because I've repurchased that a couple of times. It just looks like skin. That's the best thing about it for me is that the color corrector, the concealer, the foundation, it looks like skin. It doesn't look like makeup. I finished the Essence Color Correcting Stick in green. Obviously, I like using this on any spots that I have scarring and I have a spot of psoriasis on my forehead So I always have to color correct with green. It's one of those things. that's also very noticeable if I skip that step I know sometimes people have a little bit of redness and they just like pinpoint conceal or whatever But using a color corrector really helps me avoid the need to use Concealer and it looks more natural that way, especially because I have a hard time finding concealers that match really well and things that cover Things like psoriasis, which can be a little flaky. It can be various types of texture on my skin and it can be kind of a few different layers. And I like doing the primer, green color corrector foundation on top and then I usually don't even need to use concealer and it lasts all day and nobody can usually tell it's there. Um, I noticed this because I skipped it just recently and I had somebody ask me what was the thing on my forehead they're like oh my god what happened are you like you are you okay and I said oh that's just my psoriasis they're like what you haven't had that before and I was like yes I actually have had that for years but thank you it just goes to show that you know you can really cover things with makeup the essence color correcting stick was okay it was definitely only a couple of dollars I am a horrible person and really like the very expensive YSL one which I hate that's a liquid one, which I find the liquid color corrector works better for that spot on my forehead in particular. And I don't have a whole lot of redness elsewhere on my face. That's the main thing I need color correcting for. And the liquid just seems to work better because the stick is a little bit drier. And where that spot on my forehead is dry and flaky, it just works better with a liquid. So I have just a couple of more products. The next thing is a foundation. This is from CoverGirl. This is the Clean Oil Control Foundation in 505 Ivory. This is one of my absolute favorite foundations from the drugstore. I did repurchase this one already. This is pretty much scraped clean. I was using one of those little foundation brushes to dig product out so I could get every last drop I could. This is such a good color match for me and I don't always manage to find a good color match at the drugstore. Um, in fact, the other CoverGirl foundations in this line that are the same shade are too dark for me, which is, I don't understand how it can be the same color, 505 Ivory, and in other types be too dark, but whatever. Uh, this one is great and it's not really very matte. Um, sometimes, you know, matte foundations can really suck moisture out of your skin. This just 
evens things out and looks very natural. Now this is not a light formula like say the Urban Decay Naked Skin Foundation. This definitely looks more like you're wearing makeup when you're wearing this foundation but it just smooths everything out, covers everything so evenly and lasts so well. It just has such a good wear time, especially for a drugstore foundation. I feel like you kind of have to evaluate things a little bit differently, but this performs so well that I would easily pay $25 for it instead of six. You know, it really is a great performing product. I finished a little mini mascara. This is from Stila. It's the Huge Extreme Lash Mascara. I loved this mascara so much that I really considered dropping $30 on the full size. A little bit nutty, a little bit nutty, but it just made my lashes so long and full. And that's what I really like out of mascara. I don't really like just lengthening mascara because then I get really long lashes but they're very very sparse. This made my lashes look full and thick. I like wearing false eyelashes because I don't feel like I have the greatest definition to my eyes without them but this mascara was really good for giving my eyes that extra definition especially when I applied a little bit extra just to the outer corners. Uh, it really just was a mascara that I was pretty happy with. It's sort of similar to the L'Oreal Lash Paradise which I've been using but the the Stila one is definitely better. I just don't want to I don't want to spend that money. So the last few things I have are brow products. So this one I've already repurchased. I think it's a staple for a lot of people. The Anastasia Dip Brown. My shade is Ash Brown. So this one all done. I really like this for when I want like villain eyebrows. I really like to paint them on sometimes. I go back and forth with wanting like the really structured fake brows and just combing through my brows with like tinted brow gel. And the dip brow is the best brow pomade that I've used that really allows me to achieve that Disney villain eyebrow that I'm so fond of. And that shade is such a good match. I wish that they had that shade in some of their other brow products. Ash Brown, so such a good cool brown that just works so well and it can look natural if you don't apply a ton of it. I definitely like to go overboard. Um, I do have two tinted eyebrow gels. I have one from YSL, this is the Couture Brow. Uh, this I really liked. Uh, has a really tiny little brush and I felt like I could really get it in my brow hair where I needed the a little bit extra tint and color um, because I do have fairly sparse brows and something that I've been trying to work on and I'm constantly experimenting. Um, I really liked the the brush in particular with this one because it was so small and I just I like that it's longer. I don't like little short brushes. That's the problem I'm having now with the Glossier Boy Brow is that it's so tiny. I, I like the small brush but I just wish it was on a longer handle because I'm just very fussy that way. So I might go back to the YSL at some point. I don't know. I think I just want to experiment with some other ones first, but I know that that one works well. And then I end up really becoming fond of the MAC brow set. This is Beguile. So it's got like a little tiny bit of shimmer in there. And I didn't like the brush in this case because it's really just like a big mascara wand. So at the, the beginning of my brows, things could get really messy really fast and even trying to get it on the, the tail end of my brow it could get messy as well because I don't have a lot of brow hair. I don't have really wide thick brows that I wish I did and then my brows end up looking kind of hazy because I end up getting just a tiny bit of product like outside of where I want it to be and then things just don't look very good. So I really liked the formula of this, not the brush. The brush was very, very hard to work with, but the product itself I really came around to as I was using it more. And then the last one I have is just a clear brow gel. This is from Anastasia Beverly Hills, little mini one of the, the standard eyebrow gel that everybody loves. 
it was fine. I really don't know why people rave about it so much. Maybe it's just because I'm terrible at doing my brows. That's why I don't love it that much. I can see why some people like it because it uh, has a really strong hold. It's like hairspray for your brows. But I've been using some drugstore ones, specifically one from L'Oreal that I really like um, for a clear brow gel. So I don't really see the need to go back to Anastasia for a clear brow gel. Not saying I won't, but just right now, I do think that the drugstore is serving my clear brow gel needs so anyway that is everything for my empties I am going to try to do them more often maybe every two months something like that I'm going to try and make a reminder for myself I'm going to try and plan ahead and you know be a be a better youtuber because I tend to forget about things if I don't make a list if I don't have a schedule I will forget about all the things that I said I was going to do and all of the projects and stuff that I'm working on because I just start thinking about other things and what I want to do more and sometimes I feel like people don't like empties that much but I really love them my first video on YouTube was an empties video I've said that a thousand times but I just really enjoy them and I love talking about things that are finished and you know pros and cons and would you buy it again have you already bought it again and I feel like you learn so much so anyway thank you so much for watching let me know what you think of any of these products and if you have any recommendations for me especially like I said for those sheet masks please do let me know anyway thank you once again I hope you have a wonderful day wherever you are and I hope we get a chance to chat soon bye for now